everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. Today we're highlighting two very special people, both of whom I am so lucky enough to call my friends. Beth Troutman, who is part of The Balancing Act family, will be sharing her story of volunteerism, why she goes to Haiti to help the children. And then there's Mark Bonacani. I've told you, he and I went to the University of Miami together. His life took a dramatic turn on the football field. His book, Undefeated, From Tragedy to Triumph, chronicles his life and determination to one day find a cure for paralysis and I, he's going to walk again. You know, he's such an inspiration. He has such a spirit and his dad Nick is just standing right there with him. He's got a great team behind him. Yes, he does. Plus, it's that time of year, vacation. Whether you're young or young at heart, there's always something to do in Florida. So pack your bags, Julie, because that and so much more coming your way right here on the Balancing Act, and it all starts right now. Did you like that vacation? I saw it's vacation time, and we've got some fun ideas for the whole family. After all, there's always something to do in Orlando, Florida. Thanks, Julie. My family and I are so excited to be here in Orlando where we are going to experience some one-of-a-kind adventures. Orlando is home to 13 theme parks and water adventure parks. That's why it's known as the theme park capital of the world. And it's also the number one destination in the entire United States. So come on, we're about to have lots of fun. When Christina told me we were coming to Orlando with the kids, I thought the kids are just going to love it. Last year, more than 72 million people visited Orlando. And today, we are going to do something very unique to Orlando and hop on an airboat. We're here at Wild Florida, hoping to see an alligator or two, maybe some cool, unique birds. There are tons of species that call the Florida Everglades home, so let's go see what we can find. You guys ready for this? Yeah! yeah. Let's do it! We are on an airboat in the headwaters of the Central Florida Everglades. That's a white heron. Now, why do you think they have long legs? To hey. run fast? No, they're wading birds. They can walk in the water. What's he doing with his neck? Out here, we can see everything from alligators to eagles and big wading birds like the white heron and blue heron we just saw. Pretty cool, huh? We had to check out the wildlife here. They have a couple of albino alligators, tons of other alligators that we'll get to feed. We can take a selfie with a sloth, otherwise known as a slothy, feed the lemurs, check out maybe some zebras. There is so much to see here. Oh my gosh, do you want to feed the alligators? Yeah! Say cheese! You're doing a good job feeding Luke. Ah, I love you! If you really want to see Orlando, head up to Icon Orlando. This is the tallest observation wheel on the East Coast. It's over 400 feet tall and it weighs 3 million pounds. Now to give you an idea of how big that is, imagine 300 school buses. Pretty big. Look at them, they're in swings. Here, let's take a picture selfie. a bit of shopping and at the mall at millennia and orlando premium outlets i can shop till i drop so many great stores and boutiques all this shopping has made us hungry so let's eat okay after all of that activity who is ready for some italian Yay! okay let's go You can have meat and cheese on it. We're at Maria and Enzo's in Disney Springs, one of 5,000 restaurants around Orlando. There are tons of spots around here, some owned by celebrity chefs, themed dining, international and national brands. Your taste buds are in for an adventure, whether you are a foodie, a casual diner, or somewhere in between. So yeah, Justin, tell us a little bit about some of the food you brought out. Of course. 
This is some of our signature dishes, perfect for sharing. Here we have our trio, which is 24-month aged prosciutto di Parma. We have our New York strip taiolo with an arugula salad next to it. And there's our tono or tuna steak with our green bean and tomato agrodolce. I feel like looking around, it's like we're in an airport. Absolutely. This was the old air terminal at Disney Springs. We're very, very casual here, laid back for the Disney guests, but we do take our steps of service very seriously. So it's kind of like white glove service without the white glove. Grazie. Prego, Justin. signora. Bon appetito, enjoy your meal. <laughs> Are those good? Yummy? <laughs> Yummy. <laughs>
basically taken an orphanage that was um, dilapidated, the children were malnourished, mm -hmm. and they have rebuilt it, and the children now are thriving. But beyond that, they also fund a medical community there. They bring in doctors from the United States to perform surgeries and work in the Third World Hospital. But for them, it was important to make sure that they could empower the Haitians. So they have started funding something that they call community health workers. They've taught um, local people to help their community. They fund it so that people are making a salary and helping feed their families there in, ha in Haiti. They've employed a doctor there on the ground who works in the clinic at the orphanage. So it's not just about coming in and doing good and then going back to the United States. It's about creating a sustainable system there for the Haitians and increasing the odds for them. And that's what was so remarkable about being there and being part of it. And while I was there, I shot a documentary, um, a short documentary about the incredible work. It must have just been so hard yet so rewarding for you too. You know, it was actually nothing but rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I was going down there to change their lives. And they changed yours. They changed mine. It was the exact opposite because, you know, by, by American standards, you know, by material standards, certainly it's, a, it's the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. They don't have the material goods that we have, but they have something so much more important. They have joy and kindness and compassion and generosity. And I started seeing firsthand what I learned in those final weeks with my mother, what really matters in this life. And I took that to heart. And my goal now is to share that message with as many people as possible. And I do it hopefully through shooting more documentaries, but I'm also a motivational speaker now and travel the world talking about this message and hope, hopefully helping people find that purpose, that thing that drives them, that thing that lives inside of their hearts rather than you know, people living the life that they think they should live because of some standard that's not theirs, you know? And I know as you're doing it, you think of your mom along the way. I do, and you know, the biggest thing that I think every day as I have created this now very purposeful life, you know, this life that I have created um, with very real reasons, I hope that she, I hope that she's proud. Oh. That's the thing that I think, I hope she's proud. And she is. Her name? Nancy. Also, yes. my first name, actually. I'm named after her. I go by Beth, but yes. Right. And Nancy. you're making me cry, too. I know, too. you're making me cry, too. Well, what on a doing? more joyful note, you're also coming back to the balancing act, and you're going to be doing more stuff with us. Yes. yes. And it was it's so wonderful to be back here. I love the new set that you guys Isn't have it put great? together. It's beautiful. And what a wonderful thing to come back into this loving family and into this energy and back to you. <laughs> I mean, you know, dinners together and girlfriend time like we used to have. It feels... Um, it's like coming home, you know, it feels right because like like I said, like we said in the beginning, we auditioned for this show together and started the show together. Now we're just a little older, right? a Older and wiser. There you go. Older and wiser. It's like a fine wine. We just get better with age. We get better with age. I've missed you. For our viewers out there who'd like more information on the organization that's helping everyone in Haiti and around the world, what is it? You can go to givehopeglobal.org and at, there at the website you can watch the short documentary um, that I shot, but you can also donate and you can sponsor a child and help feed an orphan that lives in the orphanages that they sponsor. There are all kinds of ways that you can contribute and you can even go on one of the trips to Haiti. They go three times a year and you can travel there and see for yourself what kind of life-changing experience um, it is to, to, to live in a third world country. Thanks for doing this. Absolutely. Thanks for coming back. And I know she's a little bit too humble to say it, but I'm going to say it for her because she is extremely humble. <laughs> she got an Emmy as well. I bravo, did. bravo. Thank you. You're so sweet. Yes, you're right. I, I, I turn red when I get too much attention. So I love you. <laughs> we'll be right back. three decades, the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis has become an international beacon of hope for those who have suffered spinal cord injuries. It all started because of one young man's unfortunate accident. Since then, he and his family's dedication and determination have never stopped. Here's Olga with more. For more than 30 years, my next guest has been searching for a cure for paralysis. It's become his personal journey and passion. At the age of 19, Mark Bonacani was paralyzed from the neck down after a tackle at a college football game. In his new book, Undefeated from Tragedy to Triumph, Mark talks about his life, his mission, and his goal to one day walk again. Good morning. Hi, Olga. Great to see you again. Great to see you again. We went back, we go way back actually to University of Miami, I think I was about 20, you were 20? 
Yeah, we were 20 a few years ago. <laughs> that was a long time hey, ago. Hey, but we, we age gracefully like wine. And I think we met maybe a couple of years after the accident, right? That's right. I went back to school in 1987 after my injury in 85. Um, I was in college as a sophomore playing middle linebacker just like my father. Hall of Fame NFL linebacker Nick Bonacani. A dolphin, a I have dolphin. to say, because yeah, I'm a Miami a Patriot girl. Patriot and a dolphin. <laughs> yes. But my hero and playing football, and I made a tackle like I had done so many other times. But this one obviously was different because I went from really the best shape of my life in a split second after that tackle to be paralyzed on the ground fighting for my life. You were in the hospital for a very long I time, I remember. I was in an entire year. Uh, seven months, I was on a respirator, and a lot of despair, um, a lot of psychological, emotional issues that I was going through. But Dr. Green not only saved my life, but he started talking about this crazy vision that he had about bringing scientists together from all over the world, focusing on one thing only, and that's curing paralysis. I know your father, Nick, and the doctor, and so many others came together to form the Miami Project to Cure Paralysis. Correct. Tell me about that and where we are with research. Are we close? So we're getting closer every day. Yeah. Uh, the Miami Project is based at the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine. Over 300 scientists and technicians working every day uh, to find a cure for paralysis. We do things. Uh, for people who are injured now, as well as people chronically like me who have been injured for a long time. We have seven FDA-approved uh, clinical trials, transplanting cells into people who are paralyzed and showing sensation and function return for the first time ever since uh, their injury. And I know you're opening a new rehab center maybe in 2020? That's right. So the University of Miami Jackson Memorial Health System, along with my dear friend Christine Lynn, uh, who donated $25 million to the facility, is opening in 2020 a brand new 190 uh, bed rehab facility to house the Miami Project and Jackson and UM so that we can expand our clinical trials and have uh, more patients for our clinical studies. And along with Christine, you've had so much support from, from so many that have really come together That's to help right. you. We do an event every year in New York called the Great Sports Legends Dinner hosted by Tom Brokaw and also by Bob Costas. And we've had Muhammad Ali, we've had President Nixon and President Clinton, uh, Wayne Gretzky, you name it. And you're also now promoting a fabulous new book that you wrote. I love the title, Undefeated, From Tragedy to Triumph. You and your dad on the cover. What's the message here, Mark? The message is about my life and my family, about a kid who was really troubled Despite unbelievable support from my family, I was going down a real strange and, and dark wrong path. And it took me to be paralyzed to change my outlook and literally save my life. Paralysis, even though I've been injured for all these years, I really feel blessed and I feel lucky because of that injury, it's opened up my eyes to find out really what life is all about, giving me a different perspective. And after all these years, I can just say, that what I've been able to experience, I, it's really made it all worthwhile. And I feel really lucky, and it's been a big difference in my life. I can be a positive force for change. You're such an inspiration. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for coming in. Great to be here, Olga. For our viewers who'd like more information on your book or the Miami Project, what website can they go to? Go to themiamiproject.org. Thanks again, Mark. Come back anytime. And of course, if you'd like more information, you can go to our website, thebalancingact.com. I tell you, I really just applaud Beth for her selflessness. I know. It's just fantastic. And Mark for his courage. His courage. Fantastic Unbelievable. people. Yes. Well, we would love for you to head to our Facebook page and our website and follow us on Twitter. Or on Instagram at Julie and Olga. Thanks That's for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. So long, everybody.